Hi again and welcome to another movie plot. It starts with a sick boy being visited by his kind-hearted grandpa. The old man's brought along a present which the boy's disappointed to learn that it's a book, but when being told that it involves fighting torture revenge giants monsters and true love, he obliges. Gramps begins to read to his grandson the classic 1973 novel The Princess Bride by S. Morgenstern. On a small farm in the country of Florin, the beautiful maiden Buttercup orders around a peasant farmhand who only ever replies with, as you wish. Wesley was in love with Buttercup who came to feel the same way, but as the two lean and the boy cuts his pops off for tricking him into reading a kissing book. Gramps tells him to shut it as it's just starting to get good, and explains that Wesley couldn't afford to marry Buttercup so he left to seek his fortune abroad and promised to return for his true love. Unfortunately Buttercup receives word that Wesley was killed at sea by the notorious dread pirate Roberts, and after five years of no news she's still adamant about never loving again. By rule of the land Prince Humperdinck has the right to any woman in Florin and chooses the commoner Buttercup for his bride. One day she's out for a ride and comes across three kidnappers who abduct her for their slimy leader Vizzini the Sicilian. The rhyming landmass physique questions the morality of their decision of taking her, but Vizzini reminds him that they've been hired to incite a war. His other henchman Inigo Montoya was a drunkard when his boss first found him, but agrees with Fizzy that what they're doing is wrong and that the Sicilian's a douche. While sailing away from Florin Buttercup warns them that the prince will have their heads, but Vizzini's perceived genius has no limits. Just then Buttercup leaps out of the boat and begins swimming back to shore, but the waters are infested with giant shrieking eels which is when the grandson needs another break. He braves the rest of it only to learn that Buttercup's saved by Fizzy who drags her back on board. It's then when Inigo points out that they're being pursued by a small boat in the distance but Vezzini ignores it, until dawn comes and it's right on their tail as they arrive at the cliffs of insanity. The group are all carried up a rope by the giant, but they're pursued by the mysterious masked sailor in black who begins catching them. At the top of the cliff Vezzini cuts the rope but the persistent pursuer hangs on to the side and keeps coming, so he leaves the swashbuckler Inigo behind to deal with the man in black while the others flee. He's the best swordsman in the land and waits impatiently to show off his skills, so he throws the rope back down to help his opponent up the cliff and get the fight started. While the man catches his breath and removes the stones from his shoes, Inigo says that he spent his entire life searching for the six-fingered man who killed his father. He only works for Vizzini as the revenge business isn't profitable and now must kill the stranger to pay the bills. The two engage in a spectacular left-handed duel through the ruins of a castle while having a gentlemanly conversation. Then when Inigo reveals that he was just going easy on the stranger and is actually right-handed, the man in black reveals the same thing and they continue matching each other's skills. Eventually the stranger proves to be the better swordsman and defeats his opponent, but doesn't want to kill Inigo and can't have him following him so he just knocks him unconscious. He goes off in pursuit of Buttercup when a rock thrown by Fizzy just misses his head. The giant missed on purpose to challenge the stalker to a fair fight, where he expects to overpower the tiny stranger with sheer strength but the light-footed man's elusiveness sees him sink in the rear naked choke. When he catches up with Vizzini and Buttercup, the man in black challenges the kidnapper to a battle of wits knowing the self-proclaimed genius can't resist. He pours a poison into one of two goblets of wine that they each must drink from, and after a bunch of verbal diarrhea about why his choice is correct Vizzini chooses, but chooses incorrectly and instantly dies. The man in black put the poison in both cups but says that he trained for years to develop a tolerance to withstand it himself. Meanwhile Prince Humperdinck and his men are in close pursuit, with all trails pointing towards their rival kingdom of Gilder being behind the abduction. The man in black tells Buttercup that he's the dread pirate Robert so she blames him as the man who killed Wesley. When Humperdinck catches up to them Buttercup pushes her kidnapper down a hillside, but as he tumbles down he reveals himself to be her beloved. Buttercup throws herself after him in a violent fashion and hears from Wesley that he hid his identity because he thought she had moved on. The lovers finally reunite when the grandson cuts it off again as he's sick of hearing about all the kissing. The old man skips ahead to the fire swamp where the couple flee from Buttercup's husband. The place is named for its unpredictable jets of fire rising from the ground and rodents of unusual size. While traversing Wesley explains that he took the identity of the dread pirate Roberts when his captor retired and left him the ship. Suddenly Buttercup sucked into lightning fast quicksand, so Wesley grabs a vine and dives in after her both barely re-emerging with their lives. Next one of the rodents attacks Wesley and begins biting at him before charging Buttercup, but Wes manages to roll it onto a flame and finish it off with his rapier. As soon as they emerge from the swamp they're captured by the Prince Humperdinck who orders his men to kill the stranger. Buttercup tells them he's her savior but the prince doesn't listen, so she makes a deal out of desperation to marry Humperdinck in exchange for Wesley's freedom. 
Humperdinck agrees but as soon as Buttercup's out of earshot he orders Count Rugen to throw Wesley in the dungeons, and the cruel six-fingered man obliges and throws him in the pit of despair. Next we see Humperdinck presenting Buttercup as his new bride post-wedding, but the grandson has objections as he's become overly invested in the story. Grandpa tells him to shut it once again and goes on to say that it was just one of Buttercup's nightmares. She realizes that her love for Wesley's too strong and tells Humperdinck that she'll kill herself at her wedding if forced to go through with it. As an alternative Humperdinck offers that if Wesley doesn't return by the wedding she marry him instead, which she agrees to confident that her Wesley will save her. The prince has no intention of releasing the prisoner, and reveals in a private conversation with Rugen that he's the one who arranged Buttercup's kidnapping in the first place. He now intends to kill her on their wedding night and blame their rival kingdom Gilder to start a war and take their land. He leaves Rugen who enters a secret passage into the pit of despair where Wesley's being tortured by the prince's albino. In the days leading up to the wedding, Humperdinck orders the leader of his brute squad Yellen to clear the thieves' forest of any potential troublemakers. One of the people's Inigo who's back on the drink in a strong way but is rescued from capture by physique. He helps the swordsman get sober and tells him that Rugen's Inigo's long sought after six-fingered man. In order to gain access to the castle they need to come up with a plan, but with Vitsini dead they decide to rescue the man in black who so easily outsmarted him. Buttercup realizes that Humperdinck never sent a message to Wesley but assures him that her true love will rescue her nonetheless. She calls the prince a coward so he angrily locks her inside her room and visits the pit to torture Wesley, where the Count has him hooked up to a hydro-powered machine that sucks the years off the Dread Pirate's life. The prince cranks the machine all the way up, draining his years away completely while Wesley's screams are heard by the whole kingdom. Physique and Inigo question the prince's albino about his location but a slight tap on the head from the giant accidentally puts him out. In his desperation Inigo prays to his father to guide his well-crafted sword to Wesley's location, but he thinks it fails him until the secret entrance presents itself from the tree. They reach Wesley but it's too late as he's already dead, which is when the grandson gets upset after Pops tells him that the evil prince survives the story. The grandfather suggests that they stop reading the book until he calms down but the boy begs him to continue. Dragging Wesley's body around with them the two mercenaries take him to a retired miracle worker named Max. He doesn't want to take the job but accepts when hearing that the patient's already dead and can't make things any worse. The man says that Wesley's only mostly dead not completely, and uses bellows to give him the breath to answer what's worth coming back to life for. Wesley wheezes true love but Max pretends not to hear, when his wife Valerie enters shouting at him to hurry up and help. The moment Inigo says that it'll ruin Humperdinck's wedding, the delighted miracle worker agrees to resurrect him as everyone hates the prince. He makes a chocolate-coated miracle pill to feed Wesley and the friendly couple wish the boys fun in storming the castle. Inigo and Fizzy feed the miracle pill to Wesley's corpse and he springs to life immediately but he can't move his body. They still need to find a way to get inside and Fizzy has an extra large cloak. So Wesley comes up with the plan for him to wear it and pretend to be a dark apparition appearing to the castle guards. Inigo struggles with pushing him on top of a wheelbarrow from behind, and when his deep voice threatens to claim their souls all of the guards flee in terror. Fizik then lifts the gate by hand and Inigo threatens to have him rip Yellen's arms off if he doesn't hand over the key. Inside the chapel Buttercup's already married to Humperdinck who sends Rugen to check on all the commotion. He comes face to face with Inigo Montoya, who easily bests the prince's men and recites his well-constructed motive and punishment for the count. You killed my father, prepare to die. Rugen extends his sword like he's accepting the challenge, but decides to run away and lock himself behind a door that Inigo's unable to penetrate. Fizik bashes it down and the swordsman chases his prey through the castle, but runs straight into Rugen's throwing knife that gets him in the stomach. Rugen says that he remembers the swordsman from 20 years earlier when Inigo's father made him a custom sword for his six fingers. The Count refused to pay him and killed his father but is incapable of killing Inigo, as he spent the last 20 years since then training to defeat him. Montoya recites over and over that he's here for revenge and the frazzled Count's eventually beaten. Rugen offers his killer all the gold in the kingdom to spare his life, but Inigo just says that he wants his father back and runs him through. Elsewhere in the castle, a distraught Buttercup's escorted to the honeymoon suite by Humperdinck's parents. She claims that she'll be killing herself soon but the decrepit old king doesn't seem to notice. Once she's ready Buttercup takes up a dagger and prepares to plunge it into her heart, when Wesley reveals himself already lying in wait. The princess throws herself into his arms but he still hasn't regained control over his body yet. Just then Humperdinck enters with his sword drawn and challenges Wesley to a duel, so the dread pirate threatens him with every depraved thing that he can think of, trying to buy himself time to recover. When Humperdinck calls his bluff, Wesley musters all his strength to stand and orders him to drop his sword and sit down. 
Buttercup ties him down as Inigo stumbles in seemingly okay, and Wesley's legs give out proving the prince correct in calling his bluff but he was too afraid to follow through. Wesley decides to let Humperdinck live a long life with his cowardice, when they hear Fizzy calling from the courtyard with four white horses he found in the king's stables. Buttercup leaps out the window into the giant's arms, and with Inigo's purpose in life now fulfilled Wesley offers him the job of Dread Pirate Roberts. The four ride away to freedom while the couple lean in for a kiss, but the grandfather closes the book as it's just more smooching. The grandson's now well beyond that and tells him to just finish the story. So Pops goes on to describe one of the top five most passionate smooches since the invention of kissing. With the whole day past the grandfather tells the boy to go to sleep, but not before he asks him to return tomorrow and read him the story again. He replies with Wesley's line to Buttercup, as you wish, but really meaning that I love you. And the movie ends.